Okay, so Samsung Galaxy S23 FE, a lot of people are waiting for it. It is coming real, real soon. And the reason why I'm saying it is because many of the support pages for the Samsung Galaxy S23 FE are actually right now official. So you know that that is coming real soon. But what exactly it's gonna be? Well, to be honest, this is not gonna be a massive upgrade over the S21 FE if you are currently holding on to it. I don't know, Samsung has been a little confusing with the fan edition phones, but here are everything that you should know. The first and foremost thing, it will still have the same 6.4 inch Full HD Plus Dynamic AMOLED 2X panel with 120Hz refresh rate. It's identical to what the current S21 FE offers, so you will still have slight a bit of chin at the bottom, slight of it, just like the S21 FE, but that's probably it. It will have the great color accuracy and all those things that Samsung panels are really known for. Even we are hearing that the peak brightness will be same because it's just the same panel, 1200 nits. But the biggest thing that you want to hear is that what it is powered by. Well, this time you're getting the kind of the same kind of experience. Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 for certain markets and Exynos 2200 for other markets, mostly the European countries and India. Now for a quick comparison, this is the Geekbench result of both the Exynos 2200 and the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1. And this is the anti to benchmark and 3 d mark scores. Specs-wise, the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 and Exynos 2200 are almost similar. They both have one Cortex X2 core, but running at different clock speeds, three Cortex A17 cores, the performance cores, but running at different clock speeds again, and the same thing can be said about the four Cortex A510 efficiency cores. But here is the biggest thing that you need to know. But both of these chips are based on 4NM process technology by Samsung Foundry. So you can expect the same kind of thermal performance from both of these chips because Hey, it's Samsung Foundry. Now the next big change is actually in the camera department. Early rumors actually indicated that the device may feature a powerful 50 megapixel primary camera. And this sensor is actually the ISOCELL GN3 camera sensor. Now this is the same sensor you can actually find inside the current Galaxy S23 series. It's a 1 over 1.57 inch sensor, good enough big, and the default pixel size is actually 1 micrometers. But it also comes with OIS. So overall, the camera sensor upgrade is a good one. But the 12 megapixel ultra wide angle camera and the 8 megapixel 3x telephoto cameras are not changing at all. The, at the front though, the sensor is also changing, but this time it might disappoint you, might not. Because it's a good sensor, but it's a lower end resolution. It's a 10 megapixel unit, but we can always say megapixels don't matter. Now, other than that, it is coming with Android 13 with One UI 5.1. So you know that it will get four years of major Android updates and five years of security updates. So you can count on your own. And it will also come with a 4,500 image battery with 25 watt fast charging. So charging wise, there is no improvement, not even in the battery department. But it will also come with IP68, dust and water resistant rating and 15 watt wireless charging and reverse wireless charging. So you're getting all those things. Now, another thing is that you're not going to get plastic back anymore. It's going to be glass made one. So that's another change if you care about that. So yeah, overall, looks wise, it's changing from the rear end. So just it looks like the Galaxy A54, A23 series, and that's probably it. So of course, it's a big upgrade, but it will also launch at the same price as last year's model, which is $599. You know, one weird thing is that Samsung recently reintroduced the S21 FE with Snapdragon chip in the market where the S21 FE was already available with Exynos chip. And that too at a higher price that is going to be very close to the price of the S23 FE. So I don't know where Samsung exactly going to position it because the S23s are getting cheaper. So I don't know. Now other than that, there are a few fan edition models coming too, like Tab S9 FE and S9 FE Plus for those people who wanted Tab S9 kind of capabilities but at a cheaper price. The S9 FE Plus will have a 12.4 inch display, whereas the Tab S9 FE will have a 10.9 inch screen. The 11 inch model will actually start at 628GB model, while the bigger model will actually start at 828GB model, will also have a 12 to 56GB storage option. Both of them will have micro SD card slots, studio speakers, bundled S Pen. So if you like to draw, then that is coming for free. And all of them will also be powered by the Exynos 1380 chipset which is kind of the same as the Snapdragon 770G. Now, battery-wise, the bigger Plus model has 9,800 mAh battery, and the smaller 11-inch model actually has 8,000 mAh battery, and both of them support up to 45 watt fast charging. And I forgot to mention probably, but both of these displays are actually going to be IPS LCD panels, even though they are going to be high refresh rate panels, but IPS LCD panels. 
Another thing is they are going to come in different color options like mint, lavender, gray slash graphite and silver color options. Anyway, both of them will also come with Android 13 based One UI 5.1.1 out of the box and all of them will support DeX mode. Let me know your thoughts about the Galaxy S23 FE. Are you going to upgrade to S23 FE and from which phone you are upgrading to it? And yes, if you want, you can get some crazy cool wallpapers up on my website. A link down below. Until the next one, bye and take care.